Drama, drama, drama. And I know you guys love some drama because historically over the last like year or so, my drama videos have always done very, very well. You know, it's very easy. Everyone's like, oh, I hate drama. Oh, why are these players always involved in drama? Whatever, whatever. But people love clicking on it. They can't look away. And today we have some absolute banger drama. It's a familiar face, a familiar organization to this whole thing. This is Fnatic. It seems like they're, they're probably the team that I've covered the most drama for over the past year. Um, today we have kind of an update or, or a new saga in the upset world's nemesis drama um, obviously from a couple of months ago during the world championships um, there's so much to cover in this video I think we're probably gonna split it into two videos today we're gonna go over some twit longers we're gonna give you guys all the info the breakdown to just catch you up on what's even going on in this drama and then I do want to make another video kind of giving more of my thoughts and opinions on the whole situation uh, but with that being said let's get right into this um, make sure you guys do drop a like subscribe help me get to 10,000 subscribers by the end of the year um, but yeah here we go so this all starts out with Adam um, the former now top laner for Fnatic, obviously it's rumored or, or even official at this point that he's going to be moving on to team BDS. Um, it all started with him dropping this twit longer. And, uh, he said, you know, my season of Fnatic so far, French and English, um, 48,000 likes. That's insane. That's like more likes than Bjergsen got on his post of like leaving TSM or coming back to Team Liquid. I mean, those posts got like 30, 35, 40,000 likes. Um, the fact that Adam has like, I think he has 180,000 followers on Twitter maybe. Um, I think it'll show 160,000 followers on Twitter and he got 50,000 likes on a post. That's crazy. That shows you how big of a deal this was, how big of news this was, and how big of drama this was. Everyone is interested. Um, and it's just funny because Adam, he's, you know, he's like a new face, a young player, um, not necessarily a quiet guy. You know, we've seen some trash talk and stuff from him, but uh, I don't think anyone was ready for this. So let's start getting into this. It's pretty long. Um, you know, he says, hello, ever hello, everyone. It's finally done. I won't be playing for Fnatic next year. I'm obviously very sad to come to this point because unfortunately, it was not necessarily the thing I wanted most. Uh, the rumors that it was me and me alone who wanted to leave the team are true. It was me and me alone who let Fnatic know my intention to leave the team. So that is interesting. You know, it's not him saying that Fnatic was kicking him, Fnatic getting rid of him. It is him wanting to leave. We did hear from Bloop during the, uh, you know, free agency show that it seemed like the relationship between Adam and Fnatic was like irreparable. Um, and yeah, it seems like, you know, a lot of that was true. You know, Bloop obviously does a good job. He said, first of all, uh, you have to know that my split of Fnatic was not the easiest one from a sporting and extra sporting point of view. I don't know what extra sporting is, but we're going to find out. Um, if I hadn't had Niski, Yamato, Pete, Fab, Chris, and especially his girlfriend, hey, we're always throwing girlfriends in the mix, I don't think I could have become the player I am today. Um, overall, before talking about the team, I personally consider that I did an incredible split, and yet the conditions were not necessarily the most optimal ones, sincerely. You know, I think a lot of people would agree with that. Adam did overall have a good split. Um, obviously, had some, some ups and downs, some bad moments, but some very, very good moments, you know, probably all capped off by that Darius game in game five against G2 where he clapped wonder took the team to worlds um, overall I would say you know Adam's time with Fnatic was an overall success even if they came up a little bit short at worlds I don't think that's necessarily the fault of a rookie especially um you know, Adam in this situation. Uh, he said, with hindsight, I realized that joining such a lineup while being a rookie is probably one of the most double-edged choices. Unfortunately, everything ended up pretty well since we still finished second in the LEC. And I want to repeat, second in the LEC for those um, who like to trash us on our performance at the Worlds for getting our performance during the whole split and playoffs. We qualified for the Worlds, my first Worlds I will have done at 19 years old, very happy. Nevertheless, it doesn't change the fact that my experience at Worlds will not have been the best thing to happen to me, only on the sporting level, I mean. Uh, upset announced... That he had to leave. Now we're getting to the good stuff. That he had to leave for urgent family reasons 12 hours before our first match. So we had a meeting at 11 p.m. the night before. And our first match is at 11 a.m. Uh, I will let you imagine the atmosphere of the team 12 hours before our official start of Worlds. Only two scrim games with Bean that were finished in 10 minutes each. So... Uh, Bean absolutely got thrown into the fire into a very, very rough situation. The team, you know, showed some mental boom before the tournament even started. And I can only imagine what they were going through. Riot has League of Legends esports set up to the point where there is one tournament that really matters the whole season. Yeah, your domestic splits kind of matter, especially for a young player like Adam. You know, winning a championship would be cool. Doing well would be cool. Um, you know, winning games in regular season, winning playoff games, that's awesome. MSI kind of matters. You know, it's, it's kind of a big deal. But even like, you know, G2 winning MSI, do people see that anywhere near if G2 would have won a world championship? No, not at all. There's one big tournament a year. There is a world championships, and that is good and bad. But it's bad because you practice for 10 months, grind, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 hour days. Um, you have to make it through the spring split. You got to go to MSI. You got to make it through summer split. You got to qualify for Worlds. You do everything. 
just to do well at the World Championships, and then to have that taken away from you 12 hours before your very first match has to feel terrible, has to feel like the nastiest gut punch, you know, stab in the stomach, whatever, ever. So I, I, I totally get the players being upset. I totally understand where Adam is coming from. Um... So yeah, between us, there's absolutely nothing legal in Upset's departure, and his departure is totally unjustified, at least until he says what he really left, because until today, Upset just left to join his girlfriend because she felt bad to be alone, and maybe I'm wrong, who knows. So, that is a banger sentence. There's a lot going on there. He says that uh, Upset's departure is totally unjustified, you know, saying that it's totally unjustified, but also at the same time saying he doesn't know what happened. Asking Upset to come out and actually tell us what happened, because until we have, until we know what happened, he's under the assumption that uh, he left to join his girlfriend because she was lonely, you know? A lot of craziness going on there. That is quite the sentence. That's obviously a big banger um, that people took from this. But again, at the end of the day, you do have to remember, he said, maybe I'm wrong, who knows? He's saying he doesn't know for sure. So that is some bold, you know, allegations. Um, anyway, those were the last words he said to us before he left us one day before the world. So he's saying that Upset told him, hey, my girlfriend's lonely. I have to go home to her. Uh, of course, after the world, I asked for details, but apparently he didn't tell anyone the exact reason for his departure. Um, there's nothing urgent because otherwise he would have told us. And personally, I don't give a damn about the privacy reason when I worked. We all worked for one year to reach world. Knowing that even the management fanatic still doesn't know, eh? You're going to tell me why I'm saying this? I'm not trying to create any drama. Okay, that's cap. Uh, I'm just trying to say things that I have in my heart since the end of Worlds uh, and that are still unanswered. Things that had to be said sooner or later. That's it for the little um, parentheses, uh, or parenthesis. I don't know. I don't know how you say that word. Uh, now the upset is gone, we have to deal with it. Maybe we could have made it out of groups if everyone had managed to keep their spirits up from the beginning of the competition. Um, so yeah, kind of crazy. But... He does then go on to say the post-world stuff. Uh, after Worlds, he tried to have explanations about Upset's departure. He didn't get any answers from Fnatic management. After that, I was seriously thinking about leaving Fnatic. Uh, then came Perks and Alfari rumors. You know, he talks about how um, it, uh, Fnatic tried to, to sign Alfari, you know, and that kind of rubbed him the wrong way. Um, so all this craziness, all this craziness, but these massive, massive allegations coming out at Upset. And again, I don't know where I stand on this because on one hand, I totally get it. Um, it does feel kind of BS that Upset gets to leave, gets to not tell anyone anything uh, because again, this is a team. You are a group. You all worked for this. But at the same time, I also, you know, I'm on the side of people believing that Upset wouldn't have just left for nothing, wouldn't have just left because his girlfriend was lonely or whatever. You know, this is a guy who has been wanting to go to world so badly for the past five years. Um, I get Adam's frustration about not getting answers, but I also get the, you know, privacy or, or potentially whatever having on upset side. The fact that we still don't know what happened, I think makes this situation impossible to judge. Now, if it was a legitimate emergency, crazy, you know, reason that upset absolutely had to attend to, I think it sucks still. And I under, I still would understand Adam and all the players being upset, but I would get it. But if it is some BS reason or, or some reason that could have been pushed back or some reason that could have been dealt with otherwise, um, you know, then upset's definitely wrong here. But right now, nobody knows. Adam doesn't know. I don't know. You don't know. Nobody out there knows except for maybe upset, maybe his family, and maybe fanatic management. But honestly, I don't even know at this point. Um, we did get a response from upset, which was a banger as well. He said, privacy assumptions and my thoughts, um, where he said, there is a reason I do not want to share personal things, especially from the people closest to me um, that I love with the public. Me sharing information from people from the team that I cannot trust at a deep level who can turn against me and share my personal life with the people that uh, want the worst for me and my family is something I never want to do. I shared the situation with Yamato, and I intended to do the same with Hill saying because these are the people I thought I had a genuine, trusting relationship with that would not use my weakness and vulnerability to create a situation that could have been more hurtful in such difficult times. Uh, I don't want to expose anyone close to me uh, to people saying terrible things about the things that happened in my private life uh, of my family because I know how fast people in this industry can spread such information. There will always be people online that will try anything to hurt you and the people around me, uh, and it's my utmost priority to keep that from happening as much as I can. I believe everyone has a right to privacy, and I cannot tell people I don't fully trust what the situation is. Hilly knew me well enough as a person and how much I care about competing, and that he did not even want to know anything, and I know like uh, people like Yamato and Hilly are friends for life. Regarding people writing things about my wife has been by far the most sad and hurtful part uh, for me and her in this. She would never ask me to leave Worlds and she has been nothing but supportive. People attacking her based off assumptions uh, when they do not have any insight are really the worst and uh, do not for a second think that there is a real human uh, and that what you're doing is very hurtful and disgusting. I understood that... Um, 
not being open with the private life of me and my loved ones could lead to mistrust and i would understand if people would not want to play with me but purposely assuming things uh, with bad intentions is really the lowest of the lows now I'll restrain myself from talking about the experience working with adam so you know it sounds like there might be some drama on upset side in terms of adam and stuff as well um but again being a esports player obviously your life is very very public you're also paid very very well to compete to compete at the highest level to get the support and everything of the fan base and at the end of the day to entertain people to show up to these big tournaments to do all this stuff so i also understand the players fans everyone having an expectation of if you're going to make you know hundreds of thousands of dollars if you're going to have this spotlight if you're going to have this platform that you are kind of you know obligated to show up to these couple big things now again is there certain circumstances where it would be absolutely appropriate, you know, to, to not? Does life happen? Is life crazy? Yes. Is there some things you can't miss out on? Yes. But again, um, you are a public figure. You are, a, you know, a public entity. You are still a human. So you do still obviously have rights. You still do obviously have privacy to some extent. But again, just like Upset saying, he's like, you know, if I don't share some stuff, I understand if people don't trust me. I understand if people don't want to work with me. And if he understands that, that's fine. But that absolutely absolutely is a part of it. Some people are going to demand answers. Some people are going to want an explanation. And if you can't give it to them, you have to be prepared, you know, to, to burn that bridge. And it, it seems like Upset has peace with that. It seems like he's fine with where things are at. Um, but, you know, I don't totally fault Adam or Niski or whoever for feeling some type of way about it. I don't think Adam necessarily went about this the best way, you know, taking things public. I don't think that's a good look for him. I think he certainly burned bridges and potentially hurt his own career going forward. But it was a banger to it longer. It got 50,000 likes. Uh, I think Upset does say a little bit uh, more stuff here. Um, he said, I'm honestly shocked that he would send this much hate and abuse towards the direction of my wife without knowing anything because of his personal frustrations. Um, saying the last thing I told my team that my wife is just feeling bad, so I need to leave is an outright lie. I shared with my team the deep pain and sadness I was going through this time. I shared um, that I wish I could tell them, but it was something that happened to me. But I have to keep private traumatic events from my family private because it's difficult enough to deal with the hardship life brings. There's no need to have the most toxic environment of social media and the people that hate you most target you with exactly these painful hardships. So again, at the same time, uh, I do understand where upset's coming from. I do believe that, um, you know, if he's comfortable with the, the kind of consequences and stuff of, of keeping these things private, that, you know, at the end of the day, we have to respect that to some extent. Um, yeah, kind of a really, really crazy case. But, uh, you know, him sharing this, 13,000 likes. There's a lot of people on his side as well. Did it get the 50K absolute banger ranger that Adam dropped? No, but um, I do at least appreciate him... Um, you know, uh, giving a, giving a response. And I think like this tweet's funny, you know, it's upset. I can't trust Adam with this. Adam speaks out upset. See, see, I told you, I can't trust you, Adam. Um, yeah, I mean, it seems like maybe there was more issues and stuff going on behind the scenes of, of Fnatic. Um, Upset's wife did respond to this, and she said, for all the people who are speaking, giving opinions without knowing absolutely anything, creating memes and being mean, please go fuck yourself. Uh, do you really think my husband would leave worlds just because I miss him? Please respect people's privacy and, and have a life. And self-made comes in with an absolute banger and says that I am everywhere, which is just a hilarious, great ending to this whole thing. But that is the latest fanatic drama. Um, there's been a ton of people commenting, ton of people giving thoughts and opinions. This story is really still ongoing. Again, I will probably drop another video tomorrow about the same topic, kind of breaking down what the other people are saying, because there is a whole nother side of this. You know, there's the nemesis angle. Um, there's the history of Fnatic with drama. There's other people, um, you know, in the industry giving takes and opinions on it. And I do think that stuff's interesting and I will cover it, but like this video is already 13 and a half minutes. Um, so we're going to wrap it up. Thanks so much for watching. I'd appreciate if you guys did drop a like on the video, leave a comment down below. What do you think about this whole situation? Are you on Adam side, Fnatic, uh, upset side, somewhere in the middle? I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts and opinions. Subscribe, save today and all my latest content. I hope I catch you guys in the next one but until then <laughs> peace